Okay, here we are. Prop the mic, PTM, on a beautiful Thursday, July twentieth, twenty twenty three. I see, I see my friend Dave over there with a uh, a new shirt. Is it? Yes, I'm uh, repping the uh, prop the mic. Stand uh, up a little bit. Stand up a little bit. Let's let's let's, let's get the full. Ah, there we go. Very nice. Prop the mic apparel is officially for sale. So. Um, and that's all I'm going to wear anymore. So yeah, that's it. That's it. Mine's coming. So, it's in the mail. So, so check out our uh, Twitter page. We'll get the link up there. Um, we got some uh, some fun PTM gear, and then we also have some just like gambling, sports gambling uh, T-shirts as well, which I think you'll find funny. So check it out. Um, it's a great way to support us and just look really cool. Yes, that, definitely very cool looking. <laughs> What's all going right. on? Um, I don't know, man. It's a uh, these day games are killing killing me. These uh, WNBA games are like uh, making me have to start to do the analysis at seven in the morning. I know, <laughs> but uh, but that's cool. So yeah. we got we got one one game going on right now. Um, got the Sun um, and uh, and our favorite future team Atlanta, um, and uh, then we got three tonight. So I think today we're going to cover the the night games, right? Yes, sir. All right, you ready to dive into it? I am. Let's rock. All right, cool. So first game, we got the Sparks at the Lynx. Uh, Sparks are seven and thirteen on the season. Uh, Lynx are nine and twelve on the season. Uh, Lynx are minus three and a half at home, and the total is one sixty three and a half. So two bottom uh, tier teams, but both are you know in contention for the playoffs. So obviously, uh, this should be a fairly competitive game, I would think. Uh, um, Lexi Brown might be back. She was game time decision, and uh, and Shepard is still out for. Uh, for the link. So those are kind of the two big, uh, big news. Um, what do you like here? Matchup wise? Uh, matchups. You have uh, centers uh, against Minnesota uh, as a nice matchup. Number three scoring matchup. Number four rebounding matchup. Um, I don't know who you who you slot in at uh, center. Uh, who would be that center? I guess uh, uh, Nika. I don't know. It's more of a forward, really. I don't know if they have a uh, real center on this team. So I don't know what we can do with that so much. Um, Guards against Minnesota, also very nice. Um, uh, number three in scoring, number two in assist. And interestingly, uh, I think we've brought this up before, number one in three-point attempts uh, from the mm. guard position against Minnesota. So we can look at Jordan Canada, possibly Lexi Brown if she's back. Um, and then on the LA side, they're pretty good. They're, they're like middle of the pack uh, pretty much across the board. Um, so no no great matchup in terms of uh, you know either positive or negative. Uh, one that that uh, stuck out a little bit to me was um, forwards. Uh, they allowed the most three point attempts to opposing forwards uh, yeah. in the league, uh, so that would be Nafisa. Um, she doesn't take a ton of threes, but uh, I might like her for uh, some scoring in this game. So um, yeah, that's the matchups. Um, you want me to dive into my first pick here? Go for it, man. All right. Uh, so we were just talking about Nafisa Collier. Uh, I like her over twenty two and a half points. She's clear this in. All three games against LA this season, uh, 26, yep. 25, and 24 points uh, in each of her three games against LA. She just put up 35 in her first game uh, back. That was against Atlanta, um, the first game back from the All-Star break. Uh, so she was on fire. Uh, she's been playing pretty well. Um, to, to look at other forwards uh, recently, um, just the game right before the All-Star break, Asia put up 25 against LA. Um, so I like this spot here for her, over 22 and a half points. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, I had that written down. It isn't obviously um, a top matchup, but um, but I do think her her recent trend is is yeah. phenomenal. Uh, she's six for twelve without Shepard, and like you said, she's got a lot of great history against LA. So um, I like that one a lot. Um, yeah. she's such a versatile player. She's she's I think pretty underrated. She doesn't get talked about a lot. Yeah. Um, as much as some of the other uh, stars, but her game is just so she's really good. dynamic. I like her a lot. Yeah. Outside, inside, you know, run the floor, like post up. She's got it all. So yeah. I like that tonight. Um, I think that's a good one. Total isn't really high in this game, 163, but still, I think she's good for 23 points. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was all I had on the Minnesota side. Do you have anything? Uh, no, that was the only pick I had for Minnesota as well. Okay. Uh, moving over to L.A., uh, I like Jordan Canada here. I like the uh, the threes against Minnesota. So Jordan Canada over one and a half threes is plus 100 on FanDuel. She's cleared this in all three games against Minnesota this season. She had uh, two threes in each of her three games against Minnesota with six attempts, five attempts, and three attempts, which is actually way above her average. So she's only cleared this line in three of her last 10. So uh, it's not like the strongest play, 
But yeah. given uh, Minnesota, you know, given the matchup, given the the number of three point attempts Minnesota does give up to opposing guards, uh, also the plus money. And the fact that she's uh, had uh, success in all three games clearing this line, I, I like Jordan Canada over here. Yeah, I think that's probably a good play. I'm just looking at, she only played three games in July so far. Um, her minutes were kind of floating in the high 20s most of those games. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas typically earlier in the season, she was playing 33 plus minutes. So I think she was dealing with some uh, some injuries and such. So hopefully she's back to health and, uh, and plays 30 plus minutes tonight. I like that. Um, don't love it, yeah. but I like it. I think it's a good okay. game. What do you got um, for me? I like uh, Neka uh, Wumke, uh, 19 and a half points. Um, again, not not the strongest matchup, but I just like her consistency. I actually like her at 19 points even better. Um, she's In games where she's played 30 plus minutes, she's had 19 points in 86% of the games. Hmm. So um, DraftKings just uh released a same game uh parlay capability for the player props after the break yeah um this could be a good opportunity to do something like collier 18 points and awumake 18 points uh you put those two together it's minus 110 um i kind of like that for this game i think they're both a slam dunk for 18 points yeah sounds uh sounds pretty doable i like that yeah and if you think um collier's you know gonna have a, a better game than that uh you could do collier 20 points and woman k 18 that's uh plus 115 so okay that was kind of nice. the angle i was taking on that i like that i like doing the 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 uh the ping pong the scoring ping pong you know of uh the two uh two two players from the game that uh should be the highest scores uh i like that that's uh, something Definitely. we do in nba uh quite often yeah all right cool you ready to move to the next game well, let's do it all right, Sky, 8 and 12, going up against the Mercury, uh, 5 and 15. Mercury getting one point at home. This is a really sad total, 154 and a half. I think that's the lowest mm -hmm. I've seen all season. Um, these are two teams that kind of struggle offensively. I'm yeah. personally mad at uh, the Mercury. They killed me the other night, um, you know, on, on a live bet uh, for the Sun. Mm -hmm. um, I really thought the Sun were going to come back and take that game, and they just didn't. The Mercury played yeah. really well. Um, the one thing I did notice from that game is, Griner kind of changed her role. She was basically, you know, the center of the off offense, right? Mm -hmm. Receiving the ball in the post and then dishing to the three-point shooters. That seemed to work really well for them. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see if that success carries over to this game. Um, Tarasi did get injured at the end of that game, and she's out tonight. Okay. Um, so, so that could change some things for the guards. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sold on the Mercury yet. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, this is two, two teams that aren't very good. So we'll see what it could be competitive. Yeah. Um, what, what do you like from a matchup standpoint? All right. Uh, against Chicago, uh, centers, uh, pretty, pretty decent uh, scoring matchup. So uh, uh, Griner's got their number four uh, scoring matchup for center. So Griner has a decent matchup here. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, centers against Phoenix, not good. Uh, no, uh, 11th in scoring. Um, so uh, Elizabeth Williams, you can look at there. The, her props are usually only available on prize picks. They don't really usually mm -hmm. have them on the, in the other books for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and what else we got here forwards against phoenix number two scoring option number one rebounding option uh so i think we can look at alana smith here um uh in that matchup and then uh guards against chicago uh is a is a fade worthy spot uh number 10 in scoring uh dead last in three point attempts uh at the guard position um so that's sophie cunningham mariah jefferson um so let me uh that's my first pick right here uh sophie cunningham uh, I like her under two and a half threes uh, made. Oh, wow. It's a little, it's a little juicy at minus one forty six, but she's only gone over once in her last eight games. Um, I don't love it as much with Tarasi uh, not playing because obviously her her usage will tick up here, and there'll probably be some more three point attempts. So it's not as strong of a play as if Tarasi was playing, but I still think it's pretty good. They're only they're only allowing uh, three and a half three point attempts to opposing guards uh, over the last six weeks or so, uh, which is phenomenal. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's fade uh, Sophie's uh, threes here. What do you think? I mean, I, it makes sense. It takes some guts because she's coming off of a game where she drained she five. five threes, <laughs> um, and she looked like unstoppable. But uh, yeah, I don't know. If I did play that one, I'd probably play like a half unit just because I don't know the dynamic of Tarasi exactly. being out. Yeah. Um, I just want to check real quickly what she's done. Yeah, four games without Tarasi so far this season. She had three, five, one, and one. So, okay. Um, you know, hard to hard to assess. She plays about thirty minutes. Um, okay. All right. Cool. Who else do you like? Uh, that was it on the Phoenix side. You have anything? Yeah, I just want to talk 
quickly about Griner. I'm not sure which way to go here. Um, her line was 21 and a half points to start the day. When I checked before the show, it came down to 19 and a half. So mm. a lot of action pulling it down. Um, it's 19 and a half minus 105 on DK at 19 and a half, 53% hit rate on the season, 67% hit rate at home. And like you said, Chicago is a, a top four team uh, against uh, centers in terms of giving up points. Yep. What? So, she, and she also played Chicago earlier this season, scored 27 points in 31 minutes. So mm. it seems like a slam dunk. Um, but her last four games, she's put up 12, 29, 13, and 12. So mm. I don't know which way. Again, this is a lean, not an official play, but which way would you go over or under here, here and all that? Um, yeah, I, I like it. I think especially without without Tarasi, um, I think there's, uh, you know, her usage will, will, will tick up as well. Um, it's a good match. It's a good matchup. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, okay. Nice. All right, cool. Um, and then I think we've got uh, the Chicago side. Um, who do you like on on the Chicago side? Um, so I like Alana Smith um, over uh, rebound over five and a half rebounds. Uh, it's the number one rebounding matchup for forwards, not averaging nine and a half rebounds per game uh, over the last six weeks. Um, she's cleared uh, five and a half rebounds in uh, her last 13 of 17, her last 10 of 12. Uh, so she gets there. She doesn't get there by a lot, though. She has a lot of sixes uh, yep. there. So this will be probably a little sweaty, um, but I, uh, I feel pretty good about this one. Uh, I like her over. The other thing I, I wanted to look at, um, you, it's the number two scoring matchup forwards against uh, Phoenix. Um, number two scoring as well. So I, I was looking on DK to do a, a single game parlay of uh on her and, and like something like six rebounds and eight points or something but she wasn't she wasn't available yet um i don't know if you know i'm gonna take a look later because i think that could be uh this is a nice spot for her here uh and i'd like to put the points and rebounds together i think yeah that could be nice um i also had her five and a half rebounds 65 percent hit rate um i don't know it's it, you know i think the reason why it's so low is she only had three when she played Phoenix earlier in the season, but it was like the second game of the season, I think. Yeah. And she was, only yeah. she only played sixteen minutes in that game. So um so throw that out. The the reverse argument is um since they had the new coach, the new coach come in, it does seem like her playing time is down. She's playing twenty something minutes now instead of thirty something minutes. Mm. Um but regardless, I still like it. I mean I think uh, I think she'll land on six tonight. So Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's a good play. Yeah. Uh anybody else on Chicago side? No, that's all I have. All right, cool. I was tempted to go with uh, Copper rebounds as well, four and a half rebounds. Um, also a decent matchup, 50% hit rate on the season, 67% uh, on the road, and she had five rebounds versus Phoenix. So um, that's another angle you can take if you are scared about uh, Smith. All right, yeah, I like right. that. It's a pretty good matchup for her too, yeah. Yeah, all right, and then we got the Aces at the Storm. Um, Aces are 19 and two. The Storm are four and 16 on the season. Uh, Storm are getting 17 points at home, yikes. Uh, mm. Total in this game that was fun, one seventy one. Uh, mm. Candace Parker is out of this game. Um, what do you like here? Some good ones. Yeah, there are. So uh, centers against Vegas. Um, you know they're great defensively, but not against uh, opposing centers. Number one scoring matchup. Uh, number one rebounding matchup. Uh, that's sixteen point two points per game, ten point three rebounds per game over the last six weeks. Uh, so we can definitely look at Ezzy here. Um, uh against vegas then on the other end of the spectrum guards against vegas are just vegas is just shut down against guards they're dead last in scoring dead last in rebounding dead last in assists uh yeah. so we might look at a possible fade on uh on miss jewel here um that never and then on the well. seattle side uh centers against seattle dead last uh in scoring um but uh, forwards against Seattle, number three in scoring. So it depends how you, how, how we classifying Asia here. It's a center or a forward? She's a forward. She's no, a forward? She's, yeah, she's definitely forward. not a center. Yeah, okay. we, we may have earlier in the season looked at her as a center, but the more I see her game, she shoots way too many like uh, jump shots to be yeah. classified as a center. She doesn't okay. play a typical post game. Okay, so... So forwards against Seattle, uh, number three scoring matchup, number three rebounding matchup. So I think uh, we could definitely look at Asia here, especially with, uh, in a game with such a high total. Um, I'm excited here for Ezzy, and I'm excited that I get to really go after my first uh, real uh, DK uh, same game parlay here with okay. uh, with Ezzy. All right, so um, I like you could get uh, Ezzy here on DK with ten points and eight rebounds at minus one hundred five. Um, the 10 points she's done in the last 16 of 20, last eight of 10. Uh, the eight rebounds is not as good season long, but she's done it in her last five of six and has an incredible matchup here. 
uh, in her last game against Vegas, she went 23 and 11 in that game. A beautiful double double. That was on June 15th. The other game she played against Vegas was the first game of the season. She didn't clear it. It was the first game of the season. I'm throwing it out. Um, so I like her 10 and 8 at minus 105. I also like 12 points um, and eight rebounds, which is plus 130. Uh, the 12 points is not much of a difference. So 10 points she's done in 16 of 20 games, 12 points she's done in 15 of 20 games. So I'd rather the plus 130 uh, here uh, if you want to like ladder it or something, maybe you could, but yeah, 12 points, eight rebounds, plus 130. Let's get it. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I think just playing 12 points too, that was her straight up line on, uh, on, uh, Fand- on FanDuel, I think at yeah. minus 136. So I think that's a, another way of playing it. If you want to obviously pay the juice, um, 75% hit rate on the season, 91% hit rate, seven of her last 10 for 12 points. Um, she did have a couple low games in there and they, they do have, um, they do have some changes in their lineup, which concerns me a little bit in terms mm-hmm. of impact for her. Um, her scoring is definitely down in the last four games going into the break, but I still think 12 points is too low for her. I think so. Especially with that total in this game. I don't know. I'm, uh, I like, I know yeah. I just, she went 23 and 11 that last game. I don't know. This, this, uh, this the, seems like a good matchup for her. The problem is they pull, they pull her out in the fourth quarter if they're getting blown out. Mm. Like that's where this will get busted. Um, so hopefully, hopefully they keep it somewhat competitive. Although yeah. this is going to yeah. be a they get, they get feisty in the fourth quarter sometimes. They do. You know, you know, I love that fourth quarter bet. <laughs> although I don't know if I'd play that against Vegas because Vegas yes. is just so deep. They're, they're, their second five is better than some, <laughs> some teams yeah. in, in first five. So. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. And then on the, uh, so are you officially fading Lloyd? I, I had a question mark on my sheet here that said fade Lloyd. I think I am. I think yeah. I am. It's 24 and a half points, dude. That's, that's high minus one Oh two. Uh, so the juice is on the, uh, on the over here, but, uh, I, I like the, uh, I like the under, like I said, guards dead last in every stat against, uh, against Vegas and her two games against Vegas this year, she had 17 and 22. I mean, they held her in check. She didn't explode against against either of them. I you know the, the high total in this game scares me a little bit in, in going under, but you know, I I, I could see her uh, you know, she's gonna she's gonna get her buckets, but uh, I think they keep her under twenty five. What do you think? I think so. I'm not yeah. I'm not uh I'm not tough enough to play that one though today. Because every time I fade <laughs> Lloyd, she goes off for a big game. Yeah, right. <laughs> and she's just she's coming off of that monster record setting uh all star game where uh-huh. she basically she basically played the aces in that game um but yeah, obviously that was just yeah a, there's no game, defense, no, in that game. No defense yeah. being played and four pointers um yeah. so i think it's a good play but i you know I, a little scary a little scary yeah not one that would be fun to watch <laughs> no, uh, no. okay and then what about on the uh on the asia side you like asia I ended, with not, I ended up with nothing here i i have a little bit of trouble they, you know they're so potent and like it's like you know who's gonna have the big game there's so many scoring options for them uh you know i think asia is probably the best option here it's not you know we're not breaking ground by saying that but uh yeah, I don't know. I feel like you got something on it, though. Yeah, I mean, I think it's okay to just keep playing the same player if that player is winning for you. Like, you don't have to be a creative artist every game, right? Like, it's Correct. okay to, to hit you can 70%. go back to the well sometimes. Right, yeah. you can go back to the well plenty of times as long as the well is still working for you. Yeah. Um, I would stay away from her points, uh, 19 and a half points. I think it's a great matchup. I think it's she's got a high hit rate. But her two games against Seattle so far this year, she put up 13 and 14. Mm. So I think that's a bit of a trap. Um, what she did do well against Seattle in both of those games, even though she played less than 30 minutes, uh, she had 13 rebounds and 12 rebounds. So I think rebounding is a good, mm. um, is a good play for her, especially with Candace Parker still out tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, 67% of games this season, she's cleared, uh, eight and a half rebounds, 70% on the road and seven of her last 10. And like I said, two for two against Seattle. So if I was going to go one way or the other on Asia, I would probably play her rebounds tonight, eight and a half rebounds. Yeah, I like that. That's actually what forwards are averaging against Seattle over the last six weeks. It's number three overall, like I mentioned earlier. So, yeah, I think that's uh, – I like that little bit of a pivot there off her scoring to the rebound. So, uh, I like that quite a bit. That's a nice play. Definitely. Yeah. And then the only other one I had was – I just – I thought this was crazy value. Um, first of all, Jackie Young, her line was at 16.5 points. Um, she's put up 23 and 28 in the two games against Seattle. Mm-hmm. So, I, I started looking at her points. I think that's a good play. Then I also noticed her line for two threes on FanDuel is minus 166, but she's done that in 11 of her last 12 games. Wow. Um, and she cleared that. Um, I think she might have had three and five in the two games against Seattle. Threes? I don't know if you got What are the odds on that? Minus 166. Okay. So I was trying to find the problem with, with um, FanDuel, which is the only book that I, of the two that we look at that offers three pointers, they won't let you same game parlay that. So not yet, at least. So yeah. what you can do, though, is parlay it with something from another game. So 
if you like something that we said earlier that's got you know low low odds um and you want to put it with something from this game i think jackie mm-hmm. young getting two threes is 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 pretty solid and really good value at one minus 166 yeah that's uh seems really good a lot of green on this chart right here exactly yeah. so um that's it i think uh hopefully that game's i hope you know some of these games uh teams are coming out a little slow out of the break you know like mm-hmm. connecticut so Hopefully, uh, hopefully Vegas comes out a little slow and we get a competitive game tonight. I, I want to see. That would be uh, nice to say. Yeah, I see my storm take them down. There you go. Where's that storm hat? Uh, I had to put on the USA hat. The okay. uh, the uh, women's oh, World Cup. Star. There you go. There yeah. you go. So. Nice. All right. Well, nice work today. Anything else? I think we're good, right? I think we're good. Enjoy the games, uh, right? Yeah. Enjoy the games. Uh, lock in those bets and uh, let's make some money.